Hey, welcome to Q&A, where you ask your questions and I do my best to answer. Today's question is a good question, a question that you may well have wrestled with yourself or been asked and felt uncertain as to, to how to respond. So it's maybe it's timely that it's being asked because it can help us all as we move forward and engage with the world around us. And now, of course, you're wondering what the question is. So let me read the question. I get asked by my friend, how can you believe in the Bible when there's so much science that contradicts it? How do you respond to questions like that? And it's it's a perfectly good question to ask because this quest, this type of question comes up regularly in one form or another. Uh, I'm sure that like me, you've had people say something like, science disproves the biblical account of creation, so how can you believe in the Bible? Or science disproves miracles, so there goes all that. Or even um, something a little bit more subtle in the sense that, well, science disproves the biblical time frame for events. So why do you see it as credible? And every time that question comes up, uh, it causes me to wonder, you know, because it seems to me that the way the question's asked, pitting science against theology, when as though they're competitors, it suggests one of two things to me. Either there's a lack of real understanding about the nature and purpose of science versus the nature and purpose of theology, or there's something else going on. And the reason I say that is that rightly understood, science and theology aren't in aren't in conflict with one another. You see, they're both dealing with, with knowledge, but they're dealing with different spheres of knowledge. One is dealing with, with, with understanding how to live in the world in which we are, we find ourselves. The other is seeking to understand the, the nature of the world in which we live. They're not in competition. In, in many ways, they, they overlap and they complement. And, and in fact, one can inform the other uh, in, in a really helpful, meaningful way. And the reason I say that is because at its heart, science is is objective, whereas theology is, or, and the understanding of the Bible is more subjective. Now, that's an oversimplification, I know, so don't hammer me on that. But, but what I mean by that is this, that science is seeking to understand the physical world, whereas theology is trying to understand the purpose and meaning. And so therefore, by definition, it's more subjective. And so um, in order to clarify whether somebody's asking a genuine question or there's something else going on, which I'll come to in a minute, I, I ask a, a clarifying question. You've asked me, how do I respond? I always ask, respond by asking this question. When you talk about science, what exactly do you mean by that? What, what's your working definition of science? Because that's going to tell me whether um, it's a genuine question or whether there's something else going on. Um, even if they don't understand the nature and role of science and theology, at least it's going to give me an indication. Because here's why. Um, my working definition of science would be along the lines of that science is the systematic the systematic exploration or the systematic study of, of, of the physical world, uh, the natural order, uh, in order to understand the world in which we live by way of uh, observable and uh, repeatable experimentation. Uh, because at its heart, that's what the scientific method is about. It, it asks the question, why is, why is the world like it is? It comes up with a hypothesis, then it tests it, and it observes the data, to, which will either confirm um, or deny that hypothesis. And, and then in order for it to move from being an hypothesis to a truth, it has to be universal because truth can't be relative. And so therefore it has to be repeatable. So it's not enough to say that an apple fell from a tree and hit me on the head. Why? Oh, it's this thing called gravity. Gravity always makes apples fall from this tree and hit uh, people on the head. For it to be a, 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 a scientific principle, it must work in all places, not just with apples, but with lemons, with bananas, with coconuts, um, with whatever falls. Do you see what I mean? And, and so there's a method to it. And here's the thing. By understanding that, we see that at its heart, 
science is objective. There's no value to it. It's not asking questions of, of purpose and meaning. It's asking questions of what is and seeking to understand it. Whereas theology is about meaning, about purpose. Why did God create us? Why has God put us in this world? What? How do we respond to that? How do we live as a consequence of, of all of those things? And, and so we see that the relationship between the two is not competitive, but complementary. Science tells us what is possible. Theology draws the boundaries. So, for example, science can tell us how to counterfeit a $100 note. The Bible or theology will tell us why it's wrong to do that. And even if you think about it logically, logic alone tells us that science can't account for for meaning, that science science can't account for for purpose in, in that way. Because it's objective, there's no experiment that science can come up with to measure, for example, um, my love for my wife. It's, it's subjective. You can't quantify it. The only way I can measure it is against values, biblical values, um, values that are established through scripture because they that flow that flows from God. Likewise, because it's value neutral, science can't tell us whether um, adultery is moral, amoral, or immoral. It, it, it doesn't try and, and assign value. So it helps us understand that science is a brilliant tool for understanding what is, but it's a lousy tool for um, understanding meaning and purpose. And when we try and, and try and set one against the other, what we're doing is we're confusing that and, and we're making science into something it's not and theology into something it's not. And so I ask this question to clarify, because if that is a genuine question, then when we clarify um, the distinction between purpose um, and, and, and meaning and, and all those things, objectivity versus subjectivity, then we can get to the heart of it. So what is the, the conflict? So, for example, people say that science disproves uh, the biblical account of creation. And I want to say, really? In what way? Because this may surprise you, but the Bible does not purport to um, give a scientific explanation of creation. It's not trying to do that. What it's doing is it's saying, um, this is what God, this is what happened when God created. There was nothing. He, he brought it into being everything that there is out of nothing. And, and when it goes through creation, it's, it's not a scientific account of how he did things. It's an explanation of what he did. He spoke into being all that there is, and then he separated it out night from day, land from sea, uh, all those things, created the, created the fish, created the bird, all of those things. It's not a scientific explanation of how he did it. It's a theological explanation of what he did and why he did it. Do you see the distinction between the two? There is no conflict. They are just looking at things from different perspectives and, and they can enrich one another, but they cannot replace one another. One is about meaning and purpose. One is about um, is about the detail. So that they're not in conflict. Again, when the people say that science um, disproves miracles, I want to go, really? In what way? In what way does science disprove a miracle? For example, let's say it's Tuesday, 3 o'clock, and I break my arm. So thanks to the benefit of medical science, I go to the hospital and have an x-ray and it highlights where my arm is broken, the nature of that fracture, so that as in the light of that, they can put a cast on it so that it will heal well over time. And then I have that cast put on and that night I go to, I go to a prayer meeting and people see the cast and so they pray for healing. And while they're praying for it, I feel something happening. So as soon as the prayer meeting's finished, I go back to the hospital and have another x-ray and this time again thanks to medical science um, the x-ray shows that there is now no break science isn't concerned with trying to explain what happened it's just saying it was broken now it's not it, it can't explain what happened but theology can what it says well what happened was that god stepped in and did something 
It doesn't, theology doesn't accept, attempt to say um, how he did it. It just, see, um, it just says what he did. We don't know how God healed my aunt. He just did. And the science confirms it. You see, by definition, miracles are an exception to the norm. That's why science can't explain them. It can explain the norm, but it can't explain the exceptions, whereas God does. It doesn't explain how he did it. It explains what he did. You see, so it doesn't bring it into conflict. Now, here's the thing. I ask that clarifying question so that we can have a genuine discussion because I want to make sure. I said that sometimes it's not a science question. It's actually there's an agenda, and the agenda is this. It's not about science. It's about science scientism if that's if that's a word um which is really it's, it's a world view it's, it's not about science has disproved the bible it's a, it's really um pitting one world view against the next what it's saying is that um i don't need god uh, to account for life order and purpose i can use science and i've just shown explained very very superficially and briefly why that doesn't work science doesn't attach value and meaning to, to, to data. We do that. And the danger of, of us doing that in the name of science is that history shows us that when we try and draw boundaries um, around meaning, around purpose, around morality, around justice, we'll always define those boundaries in ways that benefit us at the expense of somebody else. Science is value neutral. And, when, and, and the question of what meaning, what value we attach to it, I think is best assigned to theology because the, a biblical worldview says not that we um, are the measure of what is right or what is wrong, that we are our authority, but that God is, author, is our authority. He's external to, to us in creation. So he prescribes what is right, what is wrong what's in, what's out. And when he draws boundaries, it benefits everybody, not just some. And I don't want to live in a world that says, I'll decide what's right and wrong. Um, I want to live in a world where where a, a gracious, just God decides what's right and what's wrong, because it will benefit us all, not just some. So so that's how I respond to that question and why. Uh, I hope it's helpful, interested to to hear your thoughts. Anyway, you can ask your questions at slido.com using the hashtag ALC22. Uh, but that's it for now. I hope it's been helpful. Until next time, God bless.